Many of us have been binge watching shows and movies from the comfort and safety of our couch and all those things we used to do together. Theater, concerts, comedy clubs, they're a distant memory. The idea of being packed into a place with hundreds of other people is still largely unthinkable. While some countries are starting to reopen their movie theaters, we still don't have a release date to return to Canadian cinemas. And traditional theater isn't expected to raise its curtain to the public until sometime in 2021. Artists, musicians and actors are all struggling. And as Robin Gill explains, they're coming up with new ways to get creative. The neon lights on Broadway are far from bright. They're not even on. But Shalina Kennedy isn't deterred. The Canadian actor and musician had the starring role in the musical about Carole King's life. When COVID brought down the curtain in New York, Kennedy was in rehearsals and fittings for a new production. When I knew I'd have to face. She made a run for the border, and these days, like everyone else, she's hunkered down at home in Ontario. The lights will come back on, she insists but with no idea when. I think we will go back to traditional theatre and I think we must go back to traditional theatre because there is a name for virtual theatre and it's called film and television. And I think that we can't replace, you know, there's, there's something that happens when there's a screen between the audience and the human who's performing. May you always know the truth. The Social Distancing Festival is hoping to fill the void for the productions that have been disrupted or delayed. It's a platform that offers a way for creative types from around the world to collaborate, whether it's dance, art or music. But I think it's sort of important for all artists to figure out ways to translate their work to digital means just to have a, a broader reach. Nick Green, a Canadian playwright, is the brains behind the festival. He sees himself as an artist matchmaker and wonders if this could be the future of the arts. There were a lot of efforts being made to figure out how to translate the arts to digital means. There were already grant programs and a lot of industry leaders trying to look at that question. I think this has expedited that question a huge amount. And live from Zoom, it's sometime between March and August. Yeah. Life in the time of COVID is forcing actors to get creative in the Zoom room. Take Saturday night, not so live. The skits and improv have a flat feel. Um, how about you? What you working on? Uh, not sure. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't believe that will be the norm. People are uh, looking to get back in the studio, and, and it's, it's a little bit limiting in terms of what you can do without any, any interaction. Jennifer McCarran is the CEO of Thunderbird Entertainment, the Canadian production company behind Blade Runner 2049. They know you're here. She says Hollywood will get rolling soon. Movies and TV shows have been shot. They're just waiting to be produced, both for the theaters and streaming services. Content's a business that does well in times of recession. Um, it's an escape. Uh, Netflix set the standard and now we have Disney and Apple and Hulu and all of those aren't startup companies and they're coming online into streaming because it's such a hugely successful business and now people can watch content anytime on any device anywhere in 190 countries you know 40 different languages um, the reach that that has is uh, tremendous this independent cinema in Vancouver has been showing films since 1935. The auditorium isn't a full house anymore. Moviegoers will have to respect social distancing rules, so seats have been taken out, reduced from 40 rows to just 20. And the types of movies will be geared to a certain demographic. As we open up, we're going to cater to those people that are, are younger, uh, for sure, that uh, don't have the same degree of fear. Young male films are, are going to do better than uh, young female films. Uh, males tend to not have the same degree of fear that females do. In the interim, traditional theatre will take an intermission. Torna, torna. We may just be pressing a pause button for a short period. Torna. The rehearsals are still taking place, even though the opera season has been postponed until 2021. During this interlude, the soprano solos won't be silenced. Instead, the audience will experience the virtuosos from their virtual world.
there's no question that the emotions that opera brings out in, in humans uh, will be lost somewhat online. The most important thing in producing online will be the sound quality. Opera obviously is all about the voice and it's all about music. So making sure that the sound quality of anything we put out online is as the top level we can produce at. I'm looking forward to the future when we can have human connections again because it will be uh, the cultural sector that restores everybody back to some sort of normality, some sort of emotional high that we all get when we go to the theater. Um, and you're right, we will not get all of that in the living rooms of one's home. Toronto's Royal Alexandra Theatre was closed during the Spanish flu in 1918. It eventually reopened. A hundred years later, it's the same refrain. COVID-19 will keep theatres shuttered until 2021, when it's hoped players and patrons will come back from being away. Theatre has gone on for over 2,500 years. There have been plagues, there have been viruses, there have been pandemics, and it's always come back. I have to believe that it will come back again. South Korea suspended its run of Phantom of the Opera in March when a Canadian cast member tested positive for COVID-19. Three weeks later, the cast was back on stage. But theater goers have to wear masks and there are sanitization stops from the door to the auditorium. Canadian theater is taking its cues from that part of the world. Theater is essentially a c communal experience. Uh, otherwise, we can all sit at home, which we're doing now, <laughs> and watch things on screens. But that's not the same thing. What, what happens in a theater and what's magic about it is the energy between the audience and the performers and the, and the energy between audience members. And when I knew I'd have to face... Shalina Kennedy knows all about that. She thrives on the stage and waits for its return. So I think hopefully this is going to make us all much more compassionate and the kind of stories that are going to come out of this time, I think are going to be very exciting. Mama.